and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some more Grixis control practice here. So it's rank up Sunday today. Started off very well with Rakdos aggro. Our Jun dinosaurs uh, kind of struggled with our mana though. And speaking of that, I guess I should update the star over here. We've now moved on over to Grixis control playing basically the same list we played two days ago. And as I talked about two days ago, this is the deck that I'm leaning towards right now for the uh, Mythic Championship Qualifier on Arena this upcoming weekend in six days on Saturday. And so I, I wanted to, I'm probably going to be playing this deck uh, quite a bit like this week. I'll probably be playing it like every other day or so as I get some more practice and, and uh, tuning it as we go. The one change that we made is Kefnet has like Kefnet was okay, but not spectacular. Like Kefnet against zombies, they can they can go through it. Um, Kefnet against Scapeshift, they go around it. Uh, Kefnet against Esper, if they just like keep bouncing it with Teferi, tucking it with Teferi, it's it you know it's really you know it's it's slow and you know it. It has its downsides with all those things that we've been kind of noticing. And I had two Kevnets in here before. So I wanted another threat, but didn't really want wasn't sure if I really wanted two Kevnets. So we got a hostage taker in here also. I think I'm a lot more excited about this hostage taker in here. I think hostage taker is awesome against vampires. Uh, somebody who plays like whenever we were playing like the Rakdos aggro deck, for example, hostage taker was a huge problem. Uh, it's really, really good against um, the Knight of the Ebon Legion. You know, for five mana, you get to play your hostage taker, take the knight, replay, like play the knight, and now you have a knight of the Evan Legion, which is a really good threat. So I wanted to play a hostage taker in here. Um, so that's that's the the one change that we made from before. But as you can see, our main deck is basically built towards beating vampires and beating aggro. How we have all these le like three legions ends in here, and the cry the and the ritual of soots, and all that kind of stuff. And then our sideboard, we have stuff against control with war boss and duress and things like that. And then scape shift with blood sun on Mordigo. Those are really the decks that we are uh, looking to beat. We did struggle against the green decks uh, two days ago and all the card advantage the green decks can provide. And honestly, hostage taker is really good against the green decks. Hostage taker against hydroid crisis is awesome. You know, take a risen reef, play it if you want. Um, you know, it's hostage shaker is very good against those green decks. So we'll kind of see if hostage shaker overperforms. Maybe we end up cutting this other Kef net and playing two hostage shakers here. That could be something that we may be doing. But let's go ahead and get to the games. We're going to play five matches over here in ranked. Let's get our rank back from what just happened with the dinosaurs. Yeah, just had a lot of mana troubles with John Dinosaurs. Just had. A whole lot of games of us having like nine lands and just a couple of games with, with us having two or three lands. Didn't really have anything in between. Never got to curve out, never had two drop. Never played a two drop and it survived and then, you know, we play like a four drop on turn three. Yep. All right, well, good little control hand here. All right, looks like we're starting off against a green deck. So good test. Right off the, the right off the, uh, right off the bat. See how we do against the green deck right away. It's 
got to be Frilled Mystic on top. Like, I mean, they, they got to have Frilled Mystic here. Meditate and prepare. I think I'll just kind of sit back, let my ass can't to do stuff. Kind of fill up to see if we can double spell. Oh gosh, I got a lot of stuff in chat. Um, hey, Lead Farmer. Thanks for stopping by live and uh, glad I can help out with the content while you're deployed and everything. Yeah, Chandra can really help in the late game, but I think just one Chandra is fine. I don't think it's something that we we necessarily need multiples of. Yeah, I have some angel decks. All right, there's the frilled mystic. Got it out of their hand on their turn. I won't forget our time together. The current angel deck that I've liked the most has been a deck card called sorry called Kalia and Friends so they don't or so they do have white mana because of Paradise Druid. That's a good one. Oh, I don't have that card for right now, though. I want that card right now. Never mind, that's not a good one. I was thinking, like, I don't, I don't know why I was thinking that was going to be my hand. I was about to, I was going to be able to cast that to kill the Frilled Mystic. So yeah, basically, you know, took the Teferi here because I don't want them to be able to Teferi bounce the Frilled Mystic. Need to just get rid of this cast down now. Shouldn't have kept it. Well, it could still actually the cast down. So let's see. If I go Ritual of Soot this turn, let's actually keep it. So I go Soot this turn. Next turn. I go Nicol Bolas, kill Sholai, and then I can cast down the Frilled Mystic. Trust me, you'll thank me later. This might be a bad idea. No creature, just draw land. Just draw land here. Or something that doesn't kill Nicol Bolas, Dragon God. No! Ugh. That was a really good draw for them. Bleh. Well, I could kind of do the same thing. I could just go as Kanto Ritual of Sip, but I can't. No, I'm just taking too much damage. I will spare you in exchange for it. your existence is pointless. That was a really good turn for them. To ferry into Paradise Druid. That was pretty perfect with five lands. Don't worry, I got this. Man, couldn't have had that land last turn. So Ritual of Sit's better against Nyssa. Cry the Carnarium's better, like, to hold. It's better to hold Ritual of Sit if they're going to have a Nyssa. It's better to hold Cry the Carnarium if they're going to have Filled Mystic. I think we'll go cry. I'll protect you.
This is hardly my worst defeat. Hey, Lou. Well, after they had that one turn that was really good at draws, they've had three lands in a row. So that has helped us. For sure. My prowess is on. I have just the trick for this. All right. Four lands in a row for them to end the game. So obvious noxious grasp. Frilled Mystic is a really good card against me, just in general. You know, I don't I don't get to duress away away Frilled Mystic. That's a very good card against me. Hey, Eatles. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for that support there. Alright, so 28 on the day. Um Yeah, the reason why you don't see very much mobilized district in the control decks right now is because the mana is good enough for us to be playing three colors very efficiently. So it's hard to play mobilized districts with playing three colors. You know, the control decks are basically all three color. Um, also, we have a couple other colorless lands that are really important with with Blast Zone and Field of Ruin as well. All right, anyway, I'm, I'm putting in these Noxious Grass. What are we doing? We're getting rid of Legion's Ends. Do I want an Elder Spell? I kind of do. Or a Duress. A Duress. We're going to have all these Vela Summers, too, which are going to be a pain. And Counter Spells like Negate and Veto and stuff. Let's get a Duress in here. So we just started, so we just just won our first game. So, so far so good. No, Kefnet's not too necessary. Kefnet's not bad, but not not super necessary. I There have been times where I've been really really impressed with Kefnet and there have been other times where I have been the opposite of impressed, depressed. Probably not depressed. I have been unimpressed. That's the opposite. Unimpressed. Figured it out. So if I take if I take Krasis and let them play Nissa this next turn, they tick up on a land. I ritual of soot away the land, so they only have three lands left. They tick up on another land. I cast down that land, or I go like Bolus, make them discard. I feel like I'm not like I'm not going to be too bad against Nissa. If I take Nissa, they get to play Krasis and draw two cards, and then my Ritual of Soot kills the Krasis and these things. I guess that's still better for me, though. Because they, they, they draw two, but I'm looking at four lands and manipulation and three random cards. Hmm. Oh, 
I've done the hero thing before. Yeah, Ritual of Circuits Krasis. Still no land, huh? Man, Hostage Shaker is awesome. That's so much better than what Kefnet would be. Only time will tell. Down to just four lands. There's not many lands. And Sorry, bounce my hostage taker. So, Here we go. like, the Krasis is just dead now, but I still have the hostage taker to use. I think my opponent should... I mean, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know what's in their hand, but... I think it's there's a good chance they should just let me cast Krasis and then have... Huh. Hmm. We do on here. We have five. This is gonna be number six. So I guess you're seven. And then have the Teferi bounce the Krasis. So like if they just take their last turn, they just I guess play a Krasis. Uh, like they have the prison because we knew they they got the land off of that, right? So if they just prison realm, yeah, I like prison realming the. No, they had to. They had to have drawn the prison realm. That's what they had to have done. Wow, they're just blocking. I guess they don't want me to hostage shaker their their land, I suppose. No one can stand in my way. I was supposed to just grab Nissa. Yeah, same list. Just had a lot of mana troubles with John Dinos this time. Yeah, Deliver Unto Evil is pretty unplayable. Alright, well, Hostage Taker was awesome. Helped us beat a green deck. Oh man, the next reward is pacifism. So we were talking about this earlier. So 72 is the last. So if you're doing the free track, 72 is the last reward there. Okay, so we won't get any more free of the free packs. So we're just getting these. Yeah, Hostage Taker is always awesome. I don't think Yurok is much of the current metagame. But... Um, I think... I think Ugin's just fine against Vampires. 
It's not great against uh, Field of the Dead, no. But I think it's just fine against vampires. Like, you need... It's it's a good tool against vampires, like, later on in the game after you kind of stabilize to help, help turn it to you. You know, just making chump blockers every turn that draw you cards or killing Soren. Um, yeah, it costs six mana. It's not perfect, obviously, but it... It can be, it can turn a game that's like pretty close to being even into your favor. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very. Big on that Grixis list, Epic. No, I have seven more days to decide what I'm playing this weekend, but this is the deck that I'm leaning towards right now. Yeah, I, I have seen Yurok and the, the Sultai Field of the Dead with Yurok and stuff. I have seen that. I haven't seen that deck like win anything. I don't I don't think I've ever lost to that deck. I don't know if I, w I wouldn't really say that's a, a big metagame deck to be worried about. Vampires. This on the other hand is a very big deck to be worried about. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen the Soul Tide deck win. Um, let's see. I like the Grixis Midrange too. I've I feel like I'm I'm not sure. Basically I'm not I'm that's that's definitely another card or another deck that I've been considering with the Grixis Midrange. I feel like this deck has a better vampire matchup, which is really important. However, Vampires is still really tough to beat. But I think I think this deck does a better job of it than um Grixis Midrange does. But yeah, it's, whenever whenever Soren comes down on turn three and plays a champion that draws three cards, it's just really hard to beat that. I certainly need to be worried about this Soren killing me. But thankfully our opponent extended into our wrath. That's why they could. Our fates thirst for life. There's one card we want to see the least from their deck with ours is Champion of Dusk. Hey, Rockin' doing good?
so. Shockland? That worked. All right, draw land. Draw a land. Draw a land. Ugh. That's not a land. My bloodline flows through you. That Vanguard was a big time draw. So I can play Nickel Ball as the Ravager. The Chump blocks the Vanguard. Let your weak but we're not really getting anywhere there. Crumble. So we have to hit Legion's End. There's only two Legion's End in the deck. It's not a very good chance that we hit Legion's End, but that's, that's our only out. That Vanguard was such a big time draw. Okay. Definitely hurts losing game one there. Yeah, if I play the Nickel Bolas, I, I live a turn, but then I'm in the same spot, but I'm just I'm just at two less life in the same spot of having to deal with the Vanguard and the 2-1 and I'm just at one life Duress is the only card that I kind of want here. Chandra and Narset are cards that could go. But those cards can be quite important in helping me stabilize in the late game. The woes of playing three colors. Good chance we lose this. But I think there's a there's a better chance that we draw blue source and then get to curve out here and win a game than our five card hand wins the game. No, Grasp, Grasp isn't good in this matchup. It just kills all their one drops and Legion Lieutenant is like the only two drop. It kills their, their threats that you want to use removal on, that you want to use one for one removal on, are all black. And so the... Noxious Grabs doesn't help.
You see, you see, like I see Gideon from the Vampire deck so very rarely. Like very rarely you'll see a Gideon. Very rarely you'll see you'll see a four mana Soren or an a Johnny. It's nothing I'm going to sideboard towards. No, I haven't done Singleton. Just kept one card in hand, so they know that we're that we get to discard. <clears throat> wow, the Soren. Awesome. Really glad they didn't just play the Soren last turn. All right, looking good, looking good. They drew the land. We drew the land. Also. And that's why I kept this hand. Better chance that we drew the blue source and then curved out than the five card hand winning. Defiances and fury, my schemes are never ending. Yeah, they didn't know that I had land, but they knew I had the Ravager, and I had I was gonna have two cards they didn't know about. I drink only the fight. That's not great. I bestow a mighty curse. Do not defy me. All right, let's just kill both the vampires. I am omnipotent. <laughs> Weak. I guess killing this like so I could have left the Soren at one loyalty or kill the lieutenant. This lieutenant is not really scary. Like, I don't know, they, they draw, like, another crappy vampire and they sacrifice it and kill my five-mana Nicol Bolas. Not even a bad spot there. Like, basically, either way, we're, we're going to be good. All right, so Hostage Taker has just been awesome. Definitely looking like that we should just be playing two Hostage, hostage Takers. And zero Kefnets. All right, on the draw, am I putting in Duress over Narset, Chandra, Ugin, Kefnet? Any of these things? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Elder Spells kills Soren. Does that. No, Chand like, Chandra is really like a five mana card. Like, Chandra is like five mana, you play Chandra, you minus, you you get to recast Legion's End. You know, like, Chandra gets you more copies of Legion's End, basically. More copies of Cry of the Carnarium, Cast Down, these these things. Um, you know, obviously Ugin's expensive. Kefnet may not actually block anything. Narset slow and gets killed. I'll take out a Narset for a duress. There you go. Good job, Jetter. You went 6 1 with the dinos. 
There you go. I gave you the Dino Luck today. We didn't really have tough matchups for Dinos. We had we had a couple matchups that I think that we were pretty favored in. We just had really bad mana troubles of all lands and no lands kind of thing. Kind of things like Our first hand was just all shock lands. We were going to have to take a lot of damage, and it was Thought Razor, and then it was just Nickel Boluses on turn four. You know, if they go like turn one nine to the Ebon Legion, turn two a Danto Vanguard, I'm just dead with that first hand. That hand's just not even playable. All right, this hand is semi playable. I got to get rid of two cards, right? Here are both of these. The problem with getting rid of the second Ritual of Soot is they have Duress. They Duress away a Soot. Then I'm in trouble. But I guess we're at five cards. We can't, can't have everything. We got we to gotta hit land drops. I think we have to keep three lands. I think it's it's better for us to have the lands and try to top deck the sweepers than not have any lands kind of thing, I think. I don't know. Jeez. Well, I kinda need to take duress. But if I take if I take duress Well our our first our first two hands were not winning, so I'm, I'm glad we mulliganed to this. That first, that seven card hand was not going to win here. So they're dealing three, four, five, six, seven. And then I don't do anything. Then they get to do seven, eight, nine. And then they just pump knight. I'm dead. So I'm actually just dead to this Legion Lieutenant. So we have to take that. Um... This is just my turn two? God, this is brutal. All right, we have to draw Cry of the Carnarium. I guess we're not taking nearly as much damage, though, now. Maybe, maybe I should have kept that. Yeah, I was dead taking Duress. They play Legion's Lieutenant here, and they attack. They would have attacked for two, four, five, six, seven, to put me down to eleven, and then, oh yeah, then that. Well, they wouldn't have done. They wouldn't have had that. But oh my gosh, we did have. Wow, we did draw Cry of the Canarium, but the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Wow, so if I would have taken Duress, and they would have played the, no, because Knight would have grown still. It's worth it. No, the knight still would have grown. But assuming if I didn't have anything after, like for turn three with the Thought Erasure, I was dead. I was taking lethal here. You know, if I would have not drawn anything to play on turn three, if I would have taken Duress. So I, I couldn't take duress because I was just risking dying if I didn't draw anything. Yeah, Knight of the Ebon Legion is pretty busted. Well, we had a good mold of five. We had turn two Thought Erasure, turn three Cry of the Carnarium, but then we were dead. Because Knight of the Ebon Legion <laughs> is pretty ridiculous.
What is your honest opinion about the elemental deck with your rock in it? I don't... I... I haven't seen that deck... That deck's never looked impressive to me. There has, There's never been any games where I'm like, yeah, this deck looks good. that I've seen whenever I'm playing against it. I've never played the deck, so I don't know. I think every time... To be fair, I think every time I've played against the deck, I've played. I've been playing a deck with Blood Sun that I've just played Blood Sun and they've folded kind of thing. I think. But I, I can't remember a time, like, losing to the deck or, or thinking that it looked that great. Anyway, we have Mountain Wind Cat with a donation deck. Thank you so much there, Mountain Wind Cat. We're playing against Teamer stuff. Um, it's hard as trying to figure out, trying to finish out the, the Jund video here. I have not, I have not tried and or played against, I've not seen the Yurok deck with red. That is something that I am interested in you know, trying out, seeing how it goes, the Yurok, Yurok, the Yurok deck with red. This is really hard to. This is gonna be really hard to beat. Okay, play Orzov Angels and update it for the current meta. Okay, sure can, Windcat. Orzov Angels updated. Sure can. Okay, cool. Together, It'll probably be Tuesday, because I'm going to be doing the uh, Rotation Proof Monday. Behold, so it'll probably be Tuesday. That was good. This is four, so this is going to be five. This would be six. So I need to find Ritual of Soot now. Hey, what's up, Burton? So my thinking of taking the Cavalier of Thorns is that if I, you know, like, whatever else I take, I have to try to kill the Cavalier of Thorns, and then the Cavalier of Thorns just gets back the thing that I take. And it also just ramps them, helps them out there. Ugh. These these green elemental decks are certainly they're certainly are are tough things. Like this this is what our deck struggles against because there's so much card advantage in these cards. Like you know all these things: Nissa, Omnath, uh, Risen Reef, Krasis, Cavalier of Thorns. All all these threats. It's so hard to play a control deck against this team or elemental deck. And then sideboard they get counter spells in Veil of Summer. They don't have any 
They don't have any bad cards against control. Don't have the mana for Ritual of Soot. I'm dead. Even if I did, I'm still dead anyway. These elemental decks really ran out of... They really uh, went away from being in favor for a little while there. But over the last like week, I've started to see a lot more elemental decks pop up again. And that is a bad sign for wanting to play Grixis Control this upcoming weekend. If, if Elementals do, is really popular still, like, like throughout the week and this weekend, it'll be hard to register Grixis Control. So Narsa does a good job against Krasis. I know I've tried on Mord Ego in the past. It's never really worked. Try to take Nissa, Krasis. But they have so many cards to take though. Risen Reef, Cavalier, Thorns, like just kinda have everything. Hey Kurtash. Not really. Cry is basically Basically gets rid of Risen Reef. That was the card that yeah, that was the card I wanted to take out. Is there any way to play on Mord Ego or Duress? Do I get rid of Kefnet? Certainly go over the top of Kefnet. I cut one Narsa, one Kefnet. Between Krasis, Cavalier, Thorns, Kefnet just doesn't do anything. Doesn't do enough. Oh, I forgot about Legion's End, honestly. I was really just focusing on the other cards. Yeah, Legion's End isn't spectacular at all. That's... Actually, that's probably why... Legion's End is probably why these Team or Elemental decks are popping up again, because with people playing... With Legion's End being a the two-mana removal spell of choice for everybody, it makes, like, Risen Reef... She used to, like, die to everything. Dodging Legion's End has actually been really nice for Risen Reef. It does get rid of Krasis. Yeah, it's very good against Krasis. Do not mind that getting Veil of Summered. I mean, well, Veil of Summer is just a awesome card against me, but it's not like Unmored Ego is really that great. It's just always card disadvantage. I was going to name Nissa if it resolved. I'm perfectly fine with Veil of Summer taking it down. Looks like they have more counter magic slash Veil of Summer, how they're sent back, but they just get so much mana, so much card advantage. Ooh. I did not expect that to resolve. Alright, so now we don't really have to worry about the Cavalier of Thorns trigger. The they put it back on top, but then just gets milled over. Oh, they had the Risen Reef trigger first? Oh, I need to look at that. Oh, I need to have the Risen Reef trigger happen first. Oh my gosh, I messed up. Well, I messed that up. 
Lesson learned. Yeah, even their counter spells draw cards. <laughs> yep. Just have everything. We're probably winning this like, like, I don't know, 20% of the time, you know, just cause like, get, you know, different things happen. Like it does feel like that's like an 80, 20 matchup. Like, how are you supposed to play <laughs> Grixis control deck against that? You just can't. So the more elementals we do see, the more I will be unlikely to play Grixis Control. Yeah, I do... Yep, Arcane, I do think that Vampires is favored against Team Elementals. And so, yeah, you said that you've been cruising through them with vampires. So I'm not sure exactly what they're doing differently now, or like why... I'm not sure why, like now, Team Elementals is popping up a ton, or like what they're what they're doing against vampires or landscape shift and stuff. Cause I do think those are both still pretty rough matches. They could have a whole bunch of blood suns against escape shift. That's a possibility. I'm not, I'm not sure how team elementals beats vampires with regularity though. What do you mean? Everybody gets to know exactly what you will be playing on, on day two Caesar. I think on day two they have deck lists, I think, but not on day one. No, the whole the open deck list thing is a really new is a new thing in magic. Well, making them discard a card with Nick, with the Ravager doesn't matter. They have Frenzy in play. Mono Red is another deck that's always uh, preyed on Grixis. This is also a deck that uh, people don't play very much anymore. But it is very good here. Yeah, it's the thing. Like, if if everybody's playing vampires and and scape shifts, I also really like where Grixis is at. But if everybody's gonna be playing Team Elementals and Mono Red, I you can't play Grixis at all. Like, Team Elementals and Mono Red are these are just losses. So I have to get really lucky. Um, yep. I I mean I could I could have kept a creature back to try to block a haste creature, but them at 16, I have to just try to make it a two turn clock. Stop playing stuff.
I don't I don't have anti mono red cards. We'll put some duresses in. Bedevil is pretty slow. The there is one really good target for Bedevil with Chandra. Four mana Chandra is a really good t target for Bedevil. Oh yeah, Grafdigger's Cage would be awesome here. I it's just so narrow to like actually play against somebody playing mono red and then and then you know you have to draw your Grafdigger's Cage and stop. Just too narrow of a sideboard slot right now. If Mono Red was really popular, like at the beginning of the format, I had multiple Graph Diggers cages in my Grixis deck. Just too narrow, though. Hmm. Daredevil is so great in this matchup. I'm really jealous of our opponent that's going to be killing me. Wish I had Daredevil. Well, nobody... I haven't seen Is It Phoenix in forever. As far as Graph Digger's Cage, I guess. It's like... I haven't seen that, that deck in forever. We'll see what they take here. I'm just, I'm hoping they don't, darn, they took Legion's End. I was hoping they didn't take Legion's End. Um, so that, you know, would Legion's End the Daredevil, obviously, but they did take Legion's End, so. Yeah, I enjoyed the Rakdos deck. So these last two matches, you've seen the reason why Crixus left the metagame previously. Defeating Elementals Recklessness and, fear are the and Mono Red are really, really tough. For how I have this specific deck. But I did lose to vampires also with that Molda. With that Molda 5 game 3 and being dead on turn 4. Another 
Yeah, if if my opponent let that let the hostage taker trigger resolve and then try to lightning strike, I would I would have had priority, so I would have been able to cast the Viachino Pyromancer before they lightning striked. So they they did that correctly. Which not yeah, because otherwise I would have I would have got the Pyromancer. They would have let it resolve. The hostage takers have been pretty good, though. Hey, what's up, Code Junk? That gets us our, that gets us to 30, 30 subs on the day. Thank you so much there, Code Junk. Gets us to three sub goals towards our next 12 hour stream. All right, we got the two thought erasures, so let's go. Let's double them up here. My opponent has one. I guess shot can kill Narset if I go with Narset next turn. All right, so we got Jeskai Control. We don't really want to flip as Kanta because of the Blood Suns. Blood Suns will cycle though. Like once my opponent draws three lands, like they'll have a completely different hand. I guess I could play the Narset though and keep them from cycling. So yeah, I should probably play Narset next turn. I'm just gonna keep this card. We'll find land. We got time. We're under no pressure. There are so many mysteries to uncover. Don't really want to minus. Uh, so much commotion. And have it die to another shock. Well, I'm glad we kept the Nicol Bolas. If we would have... If I would have discarded Nicol Bolas, we would have just drawn Ritual of Sit, which is not a good card to draw. Those who cannot keep an open mind.
I mean, I'm guessing Noct- like Noctis Scraps takes out Teferi. That's probably about it. You know, doesn't hit Narset, Sarkin, stuff like that. But I'm guessing no- Noctis Scraps is still probably worth it. Like, if we get rid of Legion's End, Cry, or Ritual of Soot, um, even Cast Down. So they could have, like, the 4-4 token with- that Sarkin leaves. But we have still have Hostage Taker, Nicol Bolas, Ugin for removal for that, and Bedevil. So yeah, here we go. We could die to War Boss. So we still have a good amount of removal, and we still have Bedevil, Hostage Taker, Nicol Bolas. Not a ton, but yeah, we may die to War Boss. We could reassess after this. We could still die to War Boss. Probably should be waiting on this duress. Ooh, I am glad we didn't wait. That worked out. That worked out quite well. I have practiced against home your prowess. before action. Wait till next turn. I'm next, basically, I decided to wait a turn. I'm gonna thought Erasure and Ravager next turn. I don't want them to have, you know, I don't know, like a, a fry or whatever. I want to see. But instead of just thought Erasuring and then doing nothing, I want to do both the same turn. So yeah, they did have fry. I still have much to learn. All right, now they draw land. We flip. Which, even though we could play Dragon God, I'd, I'd certainly think it's the best thing to do is just to flip. There we go. All right, so playing against other control decks is a lot easier than Elementals and Mono Red. Yay, 20 gems. All right, so we went, ended up going 2-3 again. Um, two matchups I really don't want to see are team or elementals. And, uh, and mono red. Those are ones that we're going to be losing most, most of the time. Uh, that uh, that we play against them. We're going to be losing most of those matches. So we're 2-1 besides that. We did lose to Vampires, though, which is not something we want to do. The game three that we lost, though, we mulled to five, and we had we had Thought Erasure on turn two, and then we had Cry the Canarium on turn three, and then my opponent hit me for lethal before I had to turn four. There's no real 
Like, that was just was an awesome hand on their part. Like, it's not like a whole lot else we can kind of do there. Um, about our deck, though, Hostage Taker was really impressive. I think getting another one in here instead of Kefnet. Because especially if we're, like, uh, Vampires, Mono Red, Elementals, Hostage Taker is good against all those decks. So let's definitely get another Hostage Taker in here. As far as the whole 75 goes, the card that is the narrowest are the four Legion War Bosses. The four Legion War Bosses are good against other control decks, and that's it. And I think I need, kind of maybe need to reconsider, like your Esper control matchup can be can be uh, kind of tough to win, but War Boss helps that a ton in the sideboard. However, maybe that's maybe that's too narrow. Maybe I need um, more stuff for vampires, like for aggro in there. Also, like maybe I need another hostage taker or two in the sideboard. I don't know about Enter the God Eternals. But, you know, I, I could just diversify those four slots instead of just being four war boss. Maybe another like two cards against control and another two cards against aggro kind of thing. Because I don't have cards in my sideboard against aggro currently. Um, Blood Sun is miles better than Ashiok against Scapeshift. Like it's not, Ashiok is, like if you'd rate him like out of 10, like to compare him, Blood Sun's like a 10 out of 10 and Ashiok's like a four or five out of 10 against against the uh, Scapeshift decks. Blood Sun is, is the best possible card in the format against those decks. Taking that out for Ashiok uh, would would really make me not want to play the deck anymore. Like, the the reason to play Grixis is because, like, one of, like, the big pulls towards Grixis is having Blood Sun. Um, you love Aether Gust? Hmm. No about Aether Gust. It's okay. It's okay. Um, for the most part, though, we've been good against Vampires. We just kind of lost, like, you know, we lost a match there against Vampires. It happens. Um, yeah, I I like on Mordigo though more than Ashiok still, and so I like I think just having I've been doing very good against Escape Shift decks here with just the combination of Blood Sun on Mordigo. I think those are like the two those are the two hammers against them. Ashiok is just kind of like an annoyance, but they could still just play their Elvish Rejuvenators, hit their land drops, and and so on. Um, and they can just attack you know make some zombies attack your Ashiok kill it and and then play their escape shift and then you die that's how it's always worked whenever i've seen ashiok haven't haven't seen an ashiok beat him yet um anyway <clears throat> that's Grixis control the thing to really so our takeaways here to sum it up again takeaways here get get that other hostage shaker in there and then I still kind of like I, I kind of like the rest of the main deck. Like I like all these rest of these cards. The other thing to really think about is is having four Legion War Boss the best use of our sideboard slots, or do we need some more anti aggro and maybe something else against control instead of War Boss? Then, or can you play like two War Boss and not play four? Maybe three War Boss and get like an extra Hostage Taker. Maybe go that route. Um, that's, that's where I'll be kind of debating there too. All right. Uh, so if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned stuff. And of course, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But thanks so much for watching Grixis Control and I'll see you for the next video.